Nearly 15 years ago, I got an animal that I still have to this very day, my king snake Houdini. He's lived in various arrangements over the years, but most recently in a custom-built plywood vivarium. It would be a disservice if we start there though. Let's go all the way back to 2009 before this channel even existed. It was a different time, but even then the foundation of what would eventually become the animal room was well in the works. I had various fish tanks, a snapping turtle, toads, and much more. I always wanted a snake, but I didn't go through with it until my friend Cliff got a corn snake. I was inspired and shortly after is when I got Houdini. You'll notice that he was very red compared to how he looks today. Apalachicola king snakes, more commonly referred to as blotched king snakes, like many others, are brilliantly colored as babies and although still beautiful, lose it as they grow. As excited as I was to finally have a snake of my own, I wouldn't have him for very long. Back then I was still very much in office. I hardly had Dean for a month and he managed to escape from his 10 gallon aquarium. I didn't account for the most basic of things, lid clamps. I looked all around for him for about a week, but he was gone. I accepted defeat and felt really bad about the whole thing, but there wasn't anything I could do. That was until a few months later. I was inside playing video games when my dad called me outside to let me know there was a snake. I just assumed it would be a guard or a rat snake since that's typically what you see in my area until he lifted up the trash can. There he was, Dean. I couldn't believe my eyes. He was gone for nearly three months and somehow managed to survive, make his way down two stories, and outside under the trash can. I knew it was him immediately. These aren't native to my area and he has a very distinct pattern on his head. Because of this escape, I named him Houdini. Yeah, I know it's spelled wrong. I was a dumb kid whenever I came up with it, so what do you expect? Needless to say, I put him up in a 20 gallon tank immediately after that. He lived in there for a while, then in a custom build tiered rack, and eventually a 55 gallon tank. Fast forward to 2016 whenever I began consistently uploading here on YouTube, and he was 7 years old. I was no longer keeping him in the 55 gallon because my snapping turtle passed away unexpectedly and the 150 cube was freed up. This setup accounted for his basic needs and he did well in it. However, even though the tank was large, the dimensions weren't optimal for a snake of his size. The following year, I set out to make my first plywood vivarium. I was able to keep the build fairly cheap because of how I designed it. I used mostly half inch thick plywood which I cut up into various sizes. I glued, clamped, and screwed those together to create a 48 by 24 by 36 inch enclosure. I wanted it all to be waterproof though, so I sealed the interior with epoxy. I made it look official by sanding the outside, staining it, and building doors for the canopy and front. Even though there are things I could have done better, it came together well, and it would become the canvas for what I would consider my first attempt at a proper snake vivarium. The first order of business was to make background panels. I cut out pieces of XPS foam that I used for the base. I accounted for planter pots and applied expanding foam. I used this to build definition around the pots and other areas. Once secured, I carved it out to get cleaner transitions. I covered this with silicone so I could easily cover the entire thing with cocoa fiber liner. I put an egg crate false bottom in the tank, followed by the backgrounds. The cool thing about them was that they fit tightly in place without any adhesives. At the time, I wasn't confident going bioactive with the snake, but I wanted to use live plants. Before use, I cleaned them off and replanted them in clean substrate. I combined them with a large piece of cork bark and experimented with a few layouts. When I got something I liked, I marked for the pots on the egg crate and cut out holes to accommodate them. Then I removed everything from the tank and lined the egg crate with window screen mesh so that it would function as a proper false bottom. In hopes to make the setup snake proof, each plant has a double pot system. To install these, I drilled holes in the outside planters, which I locked to the egg crate with zip ties. I also put a bulkhead in the bottom to remove standing water, but this would come back to haunt me later on. I figured that with the two pot system, I could still access the plants like normal, but he wouldn't be able to dig them out. I was onto something, but refining the technique would take a few years. Anyway, after putting everything back in the tank, I nested the plants accordingly. I filled in the rest of the substrate area with repti bark. Then I embellished the scape with cork bark pieces and branches. I finished it off with other items like the lights and the water bowl. That meant Dean was finally free to explore his new home. At the time, I really liked this, and he appeared to enjoy the space as well. He was quick to inspect every inch of the enclosure. He's highly inquisitive and even more so in a new environment, so I wasn't surprised. Even so, I was really happy to see all of this. 
It seemed like a slam dunk, but it didn't take long for me to rethink what I was doing here, and he only lived in this setup for a little over a year. That was all brought on by a leak from the bulkhead which I most likely didn't tighten well enough. I had to dismantle the entire setup and replace the bulkhead with a new one to fix the issue. However, once it was in this state, I got an idea. Long story short, I decided to dismantle the old 125 gallon vivarium. The plan was to transfer that vivarium into this plywood tank, and Dean would instead live in that tank. This all worked out for another reason. Shortly after I built this one, I came up with a personal role after observing Dean to no longer keep snakes in setups that aren't at least as long as they are. So this was actually a great opportunity to make that change. I dismantled the vivarium, cleaned the tank, and resealed it. One of the things I hoped for in all of this was to repair the glass for a better display, but it was etched so there was no fixing it. Since it wasn't suitable for a display tank, it would only serve as a temporary home. In this, I made a basic setup for him where he spent three years. Even though the setup didn't look that great, he thrived nonetheless. He was finally able to stretch out completely in the tank and continue to be his happy-go-lucky self. It took a lot of planning, but I finally decided to make him a proper bioactive setup. It just didn't make sense that everything else I had was living in beautiful setups, and he was still stuck with plastic plants. Sure, I used live plants in the previous setup, but he dug them up frequently, and I replaced the original selection with more suitable ones. Plus, the entire thing was overbuilt, I was tired of using mulch, and I knew I could do better. I just had to get creative with the plants. Before I could do any of that though, I had to build another plywood enclosure, but this one was different. I used OSB and dimensional lumber which made the task a breeze compared to the previous version. I also sealed it with liquid rubber. Additionally, I put ventilation on the sides of the setup as well as a glass track in the front. Although I like the length of the 125 gallon aquarium, I made this one slightly larger than that. As usual, I started with the background. This time I used styrofoam sheets. Along these I sketched a rocky formation and used clay carving tools to create the texture. However, the results were a little different than I intended. Regardless, I continued the process and used a heat gun to harden the foam. I coated this with various dry brush layers of tinted dry lock to make a rocky appearance. It also creates a hard surface with grit that preserves the foam. Once complete, I secured the panels to the sides of the tank with silicone. I thought it looked pretty cool. My new solution for the plants was to use pond plant baskets. I glued geotextile fabric on the insides to retain the substrate. I filled the baskets with a blend of substrate and rocks. I zip tied window screen mesh on top of this. From there I cut holes to nest the plants in. I zip tied the mesh together around the base of each plant to hold them in. Theoretically these baskets could go directly into the tank and keep the plants secure while still allowing their roots to grow freely throughout the setup. As for the substrate itself, I mixed up a blend of cocoa fiber, topsoil, and play sand. This mix would allow for microclimates, more specifically humid areas at the bottom and dry areas on the top. I built up a layer of this in the bottom of the enclosure and proceeded to add the other elements. I added all of the branches and plants around that large piece of cork bark. In addition to that, I used smaller pieces of bark to add topography to the land. I also added slate in the bottom to absorb heat. I wanted everything to match and made my own water bowl as well. I carved it out of foam, painted it to match, and sealed the inside with epoxy to retain water. This made things appear more cohesive than a pre-made one. I went on to top everything with leaf litter. This looks natural, helps create microclimates as well, and provides food and refuge for the cleanup crew. Plus, as the microfauna break down the leaves, nutrients are released into the system which is a key part of a bioactive setup. I finished it off with patches of moss in various spots, followed by springtails and isopods. These will help clean up after Dean and play a large role in the bioactive process. After adding the appropriate lighting alongside a thermostat, the setup was complete. Now this was a proper snake vivarium. I loved the look of it and I couldn't wait to see him explore. As with other setups, he quickly inspected every nook and cranny. And how great did he look in here? The way he blended with the leaves and moved around was perfect. And honestly, I finally felt at peace with how I was keeping him, and the proof was in how he acted. He's always been inquisitive and exploratory, but I saw new things. The way he utilizes the leaves for shelter and moves throughout them is something I expected, but I was surprised by how much he did. Also, my plant solution worked. Everything other than the pothos held up quite well. Most likely I didn't water it enough, and they simply dried out because otherwise I think it would've. 
the cleanup crew thrived alongside all of this and helped clean up after his mess. I should mention that unlike smaller animals, I actually remove his poop and urates when he goes, so the tank remains clean. The cleanup crew really is there just to address any remnants that may be present. I'm so glad I finally went bioactive with them though, because it's far less work in that regard. It looks much better than Bark too. However, even though Dean and myself enjoy it, I could do better, and the design demands a refresh. Currently, the setup looks a little bare and not as good as before. Like many of the other setups, it didn't move well to the new place. I dismantled it and put it back together, but it hasn't been the same since. I also had an issue with mealybugs and had to remove his old plants. You'll see that I experimented with ferns. They actually held up well for a while, but aren't looking that great right now because they need more water. Even though I could get it looking 100 times better with a quick maintenance session, there are other issues here I'd like to address. He uses all of the ground space, but I think the background canopy area could better suit him. Speaking of the background, I absolutely hate it. It held up well, but I can't stand how it looks anymore. In my opinion, it's just an eyesore and detracts from what I'm trying to do here. So I figured this would be the perfect time to do a refresh to get this design looking and functioning better for Houdini. I reuse nearly everything here from the hardscape elements to the substrate and even the background to some extent. So I set everything off to the side for the redo. As I dismantled everything, I truly got a window into how alive this substrate is. I love to see it, and this here is the power of bioactive setups. With a clean slate, I can get this background addressed. I figured it would make sense just to cover it up, otherwise I might ruin the tank's seal. I had XPS foam on hand from other projects and used it to build. I chopped it up into smaller pieces accordingly, some of which I stuck together with silicone to increase thickness. I carved these into various shapes and sizes that loosely resemble rocks. I didn't care about the detail here. I was just taking off the excess to streamline the next step. Using a knife allowed me to easily create texture. It took forever because there are a lot of stones here. Eventually I got through though and I finished them with a heat gun which hardens the outside and makes the texture more prominent. I kept this all rough because I'm coating them with grout. I mixed it up into a slurry consistency. I painted it over the foam to add strength and to achieve a base color. It will dry hard making them feel and look like real stones. The only issue is that I had to mix up several batches so the coloring isn't consistent and I'll have to do more post work than intended. They're ready for the tank though. I started scaping with the large pieces. I have the cork from before and an incredible piece of driftwood that I got from Nate. I set out to build the stones off of these to create the side of a rocky outcropping something that Dean could completely utilize. I ensured the grade wasn't too steep as I stacked them up. I also kept the underside completely open. I wove in more branches throughout this process so it appeared less rocky if that makes sense. The elements came together beautifully. I could tell immediately that this would look and function much better than the previous setup. You know the drill by now though, I need to ensure it stays in place. I applied expanding foam between and around everything. I also used it to hide any remaining areas of the old background. I left the foam to cure and got to carving once again. I did most of it by hand to keep the texture loose. It took a while to get a seamless look, but this will be an incredible platform to build off of. I'll use dry lock to bring the look together. I covered all of the expanding foam with a black base layer. I tried my best to keep it isolated to those areas, but inevitably some of it got on the stones. After that dried, I lightly brushed a medium gray on all of the rocks, which accounted for spillover from the black and inconsistencies in the grout. Then I dry brushed brown onto the black areas to mimic dirt. I felt that blending the look of stones and dirts together would facilitate a more natural appearance than one or the other. I went back with a lighter gray and added highlights to the rocks to finalize the look. Let's not forget about the water bowl though. I coated it with grout and dry lock to match the background, followed by a layer of epoxy to the inside. I finalized the background by gluing on patches of dried sheet moss. It won't grow or anything much like in the previous setup, but it will look good nonetheless. I added interest to the right side with DIY jungle vines I had from an old build. These are just ropes coated in silicone and cocoa fiber. Anyway, I glued them down and wove small twigs within them for more texture. I couldn't be happier with how this all came together. There's a lot of texture and great movement. It's pretty functional too, but we'll talk more about that later. Before adding the final elements, I thoroughly sprayed everything down and removed the water. I added the smaller of the two ferns, which you'll see is looking much better than before. I filled the area around it with a substrate. 
Then I put some on the right side and worked in the water bowl. Instead of using both ferns, I removed the one and swapped it for syngonium using the same method. I added the remainder of the substrate, followed by a fresh batch of leaf litter, the slate stones, and finally a few more patches of moss. And after all of that, here's the new and improved bioactive kingsnake vivarium. Aesthetically, it's night and day from the previous version if you ask me. What do you think? Not only that, but it's very functional as well. At first glance, you may think I removed much of the usable space, but looks are deceiving. The area under the background is all open, so it's actually the same amount of floor space as before. It will just give Dean an alternate shelter that connects to the cork. I also have a hole right above it for access to this area. Additionally, he can climb all over the background now since it has definition, which actually increases the amount of surface area he can use. Although he's a ground-dwelling snake, he'll gladly use these areas like many other animals that aren't quote-unquote arboreal. And the cool thing about all of this is that even though it looks beautiful, all of these different features provide important environmental gradients from heat to humidity and UV exposure. This adds a lot of variation to the environment that will actually facilitate more natural behaviors in Dean. Of course, the bioactive process is also in full effect, and even though I used unnatural materials here, the design itself functions like nature. My only complaint is that the epoxy in the water bowl yellowed, so I have to redo that at some point. I've been keeping exotic animals for well over two decades now, and this never gets old. I learn a lot from observing and interacting with my animals. This setup is a reflection of that. Taking what I learned from observation and combining it with research and my abilities allows me to constantly level up. And although I don't want to keep redoing things, the reality is that I just keep learning, which means that I can continue to do better. In my opinion, this helps me stay connected to my animals. Sure, it's exciting to occasionally get new ones, but I think it's even more rewarding to give the animals I have the best conditions possible. I'm very happy to do it for this snake once again. It's been a great 15 years with Houdini thus far, and I hope I'll be saying the same about him in another 15.